All right, so let's get started with editing our project video for this course. And this is going to have these seven assets that you can see in front of you. So there are one, two, three video clips that we will be using. There are two audio files. You'll soon find out what these are. Obviously, one of them is a music track. Another one is for the voiceover for this video, which I've recorded separately from my external mic to get a better quality. So we'll be syncing these two together. We have, uh, this is video is going to be about Photoshop, as you saw before, like one of the features in Photoshop. So we have got the PS logo. And also this is about my Photoshop course. So we've got the cover image for the course also. Yeah, so this will be enough to really form a good video, which can really, really go viral. Okay, so we're going to go back to CapCut. All this will be done in a new project. So we're going to say create project. And remember, we are going to import this first of all so we need all our assets together in one place so we're going to hit import and we're going to go to our location where, where, wherever you have saved this to and then we are just going to import all these files so for me that is assets for project video you must have got a similar folder so you're going to head over there select all these together and hit open once you do that everything is now here if we need to add something more Okay, we can always hit import again and add it here. But right now we're all set to go. But this is the part where, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of a break because whenever you do this, you need to understand a few things. First of all is what exactly is your objective? Okay, what are you, what kind of a video are you trying to make? Because your editing will depend on that. So remember, first of all, we are doing this for a YouTube short. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the internet and we're going to find out what are the requirements for a YouTube short video. Okay, because like what is the length of the video that YouTube requires, uh, you know, anything on the aspect ratio and all these things so that we can kind of get an idea of then of how to edit this particular video. So let's first of all see what YouTube shorts says about this. So whenever you are researching about the social media platform that you want to upload your video on, there are two main things that you have to find out. One is what is the limit of the video that you can upload here? So if I go to Google, if I just type in YouTube shorts length limit or duration limit, something like that, you're going to get your answer. Okay, so if, if the answer is not so apparent like this, just go through some of the links here, maybe some of the YouTube videos. But ultimately, you know, you will either find Google's own or YouTube's own website, which talks about this. But point is, you can see here, we found out straight away that yes, it's 60 seconds is the maximum. So we've got to keep our editing to max 60 seconds. Now we know that. Another aspect of this is the aspect ratio. So what is the kind of orientation, think of that way, that YouTube Shorts requires. So most of these short form video editing platforms like TikTok, Reels, they all are like vertical, they favor vertical based videos. And that's usually the nine is to 16 format. Now that we know both these things, it'll be very easy for us to go into CapCut and then know exactly what to do. So we've also figured that out. Now, before we start editing, there is still one setting which I haven't talked about till now, which I did mention. Remember the frame, frames per setting, uh, frames per second setting, FPS setting. I'm going to be talking quickly about that in the next video before we get started. So I'll see you there. All right. So if I just head back to the assets that we just imported, Let's look at the main video, okay, which is called as the A roll video. Okay, I'll soon be talking about this very, very soon. What is A roll? What is B roll? Okay, but right now, remember you've seen this video, right? So if I just open up this raw video, okay, let me just remove this sound here so that this doesn't trouble us. But if you remember, this is the video, okay, right now it's in this format because I shot this. Uh, vertically on my DSLR camera. Okay, so it's coming like this, but ultimately that we'll be able to rotate it and all. But if you think of it, this is the main video, right? This is where on top of this, everything else will come. So this is kind of think of it like this. This is a base video. And if I just right click and I hit properties here, what I'll be able to see is what FPS has this been shot at? So it'll tell me like the resolution and all. Okay. But you can see here, if I see the frame rate, this is the 24 frames per second, 23.981, okay, but 24 is fine, okay, in order for this to work. 
So what you have to understand is whatever your main video has been shot at, usually that's a good idea to also use it for the project setting. So when you're editing your video on the timeline, the timeline itself can work on a frames per second setting. Okay, think of it like this. So they use, it's a good idea if both of them match. Okay, so right now, how can you come to know that in the project that you're working, what is the default FPS, okay? So here, if you see this, you know, if you like, right, just click somewhere on the timeline here, and on this right most window here, okay, which is, remember, our properties window. But because we haven't selected anything, it's actually showing us the properties of the project itself. So you can see here, the default project frame rate or FPS is 30. Now there are two ways to change this, okay? One is I can just simply hit modify and I can change this to 24, that is also fine. And resolution, you can keep it to adapted. Adapted means that it's just simply, uh, when you drag in the video, it's gonna notice what the resolution of the video is and it's gonna change the resolution also of your editing project to that, okay? So that's perfectly fine. But this sometimes you just have to change it on your own. So one is that you do it manually like this, every time you do a project. But let's say you don't want to do this every time because you're going to be making a lot of projects and why do this extra step, okay? If you want to change this permanently, it's optional, but if you want to do that, then what you can do is you can go over to menu here. Remember the settings that we saw before? If I go over to settings and you know that almost all the videos that you shoot, okay, are usually you shoot at 24 FPS, let's say. Then you can just change it right within this master setting itself. So if I hit this to 24 and I say save, the next time, whenever I open up a new project, the default will be 24. So you can find out and do it according to the type of video that you shoot. But if you want to do it individually, it's fine. You can simply hit modify in this case. Because even though I've changed the master setting, but remember we'd already opened this project. So it's still treating the last default, which was 30. So I can just change it to 24. And now I can drag my main video. So it's, everything is then going to be in sync. And ultimately when we export also, we're going to export it at 24 FPS. So everything stays the same. Okay. So this is my base video. This is 24 FPS. And now I know that my editing timeline also, okay, uh, or, the, uh, or this particular project also is being edited on 24 FPS. So everything is in sync. Okay. All right. So you are seeing this come as green here. Remember, just for some time, that's because on the playback monitor, that's because my laptop had pretty much run out of all its battery. So I think it was trying its best to just conserve the power. So just charged in my laptop again. And now if I just open up the project again, you can see that, yes, we've got everything here. It's 24. The video looks nice because this is going to be our base video. So I've already dragged it in. But now, before we start editing this video, there's just one small video where what I want to do is I just want to talk about the plan related to editing this video because we're going to follow like a little sequence which even though it's not 100% compulsory I just feel it just makes things uh, easier first of all on the software because we're going to follow a sequence in which it doesn't put too much pressure on CapCut otherwise it can start lagging and all these things okay so in the next video let me just tell you what is the sequence we'll follow so that we can edit this video in an uh, effective and efficient manner and so that doesn't cause any issues. So let's go there. All right, so let's talk a bit about the workflow. So here's the plan that we will follow. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to just focus on getting our A-roll footage. Okay, so again, what is the A-roll footage? Is the main footage that you have, which is going to be this one that I just tracked. Okay, so everything is going to start off with this. We're not even going to bother about anything else. And here, what are we mainly concentrating at? Well, one of the things will be that this has a separate audio. So I was wearing a collar mic. So one audio that you see here is, have you seen the late? And this doesn't sound good, right? Like you can just see here also. You see the noise? Like you can feel it, right? Magic. And this... Right? And also there are going to be mistakes like this, the audio is not good. So mainly, we're going to be concentrating on two things when it comes to the A-roll footage, okay? Which is, we're also going to be dragging this audio file down below. We're going to be syncing these two because this has the good audio in it, which I was recording from my uh, label mic here, on my uh, shirt here. And so that's one thing. Second, because I've made so many mistakes here, we're going to trim things down. So we're going to be using our, uh, you know, the splitting tool to just split the wrong parts. 
Also, so these two things will be important, the syncing of the audio video trimming things and we also have to get this down to remember 60 seconds max, right? Because that's a requirement for YouTube short. So your A roll has to be, it cannot exceed that. So these are some of the things that we will be working on first of all without really worrying about anything else because till the time this is not ready, nothing else makes any difference at all, okay? Once we're done with this, we're obviously go, gonna go on to the B roll. So the B roll is gonna be the footage that starts to come on top. So anything that I'm talking about, for example, that Photoshop feature that I'm talking about in this video, uh, that's gonna be this here, you can see Photoshop running here. And whenever I'm talking about that feature, this is gonna come over. We're gonna be adding a lot of things to it. And this is gonna be one of the B-roll footages, which we'll place on the track on top of it, okay? And also there's one more B-roll footage here, which is this of this little girl. It's just gonna be a short video where she's saying, wow, uh, when one of the effects is shown here. And just like you see in those videos, so we're also going to be putting this. So we're going to be basically taking care of the B-roll in our next part, okay? Once the B-roll is done, we basically have a good body then, right? The body is pretty much ready. The whole base is ready, including the A and B. And then that is the time we can start to now add some transitions, okay? So anytime there are some bad looking uh, cuts, we're going to be... Oh, sorry for the bad handwriting here, but and the spelling here probably. But anyway, transitions and also animations. Okay, I'm just going to call it Annie. And also some really nice effects. So this will be a good time to add this because we'll know exactly where to add it because our body will be ready. And once this is done, similar to this, we'll then start to take care of our audio. Audio will involve of our sound effects. Okay, sound effects and also our music track. These are going to be the two important things when it comes to the audio. Finally, once we are done with this, we are going to start, we're going to end things by putting in the captions by using the auto caption feature. Now, why should you put captions right at the end of your workflow? The two reasons for that. One is when you start putting in the captions, they can sometimes take up a lot of space and therefore, you know, it can hide certain things if you were to put some stickers or animations or, or effects later on, okay, or some B-roll footages. Since we're doing this at the end, first of all, we'll be able to exactly see where these other things are. So our text, we'll make sure it doesn't come there. So they're not gonna like, you know, intersect with each other basically, but that's still not very important. The main reason, especially when it comes to a slightly light video editing software like CapCut because these are not heavy video editing software like Premiere Pro and all. With these, sometimes when you put these uh, auto title, you know, thing at work, the auto caption feature at work, it can really put so much pressure on your system and CapCut that things can really become so slow that it can become very frustrating. So if this is reserved as the last step, it's still fine, okay? So we'll still be able to get away with it because then we'll just be one step away from exporting things and rest everything would have already been done. So even if the video lags, it's not gonna bother us because our job will anyway be almost done, okay? So in between, the act, like we'll be doing some other things also, but not as important as, you know, these five steps in the workflow. So I hope that you are clear with this plan and from the next video onwards, let's actually start editing with the first thing, which is gonna be to edit our A-roll footage, so let's do that. All right, welcome back. So let's start with phase one, which is gonna be about the A-roll footage. So again, just like shown before, I'm gonna drag these two things onto the timeline because these are what will form the A-roll. So one is the video, but like I said, the audio has been recorded separately. So I'm gonna just pull this down here. And now we've got these two. So a couple of things that we have to do before we start the most important thing in this phase one, which is obviously gonna be trimming the unwanted parts in this A-roll, okay? But before we get to that, now why are we trimming? Because remember we saw that the requirements for YouTube Shorts is 60 seconds, so yes, we have to get this down to 60 seconds, but what about the second requirement? Remember that, the nine is to 16 aspect ratio. So before we start trimming, let's also get that right. And how do you get that right is, inside this playback monitor, you're gonna notice this ratio option here. So if I hit this, you can see right now it's set to the original ratio, which is the adapted ratio, which is taken from the footage itself. Okay, so whatever it was kind of shot at. So again, if you look at this, 
just kind of giving it this way because I had kept my uh, DSLR camera in a vertical way. But if I change this to, first of all, change the aspect ratio itself, then we'll also rotate the video. So the aspect ratio, remember, is 9 is to 16. So you can even see here in these thumbnails that what it is representing. So we're going for this vertical look, right? So 9 is to 16. And this is just going to try to now fit this inside like this mobile-like thing, right? It's kind of got the shape of a mobile phone in a vertical format. Now all we need to do is we just need to turn this around, right? So what I can do is I can simply just click on this and you get these little icons and you get this rotation icon. So I can just hit this and just stop this. So you'll kind of feel, you know, you don't have to exactly stop there. When you kind of get towards the center, it helps you just snap at that right place also, okay? So even you'll see this when I drag it towards the end also, you know, it'll just, everything is snappy in CapCut. And the reason for that is we've got this uh, auto snapping feature on. It's going to help us everywhere. Whenever we reach towards the end of something, even when we're uh, cutting our videos, okay, it's just going to snap towards the end. So we don't have to be too precise. So make sure that always this feature is on, which is auto snapping, okay? So we're just going to take this and you're going to see that come into play again once we reach. Can you see? Just like a magnet, it just stuck itself to the edges and it really, really helps you uh, with that. So you can see now we have been able to satisfy that criteria. Now this pretty much looks like if I was to just play this, just see. Well, one of those things, right, you can see here that this pretty much looks like it was shot on a vertical mobile format, right? And that's what we wanted. So the reason I like to shoot with my DSLR is it just makes it much easier than shooting on phones when it comes to things like focus and all these things. And I know that just with these two steps, I'll be able to anyway get that look, even if I'm going for the vertical format. Another thing at this point, which I like to do is in this playback monitor, remember I mentioned that sometimes things can lag a bit. So what you can do is this is optional, but especially if you don't have a strong enough computer, just hit these three dots here and then you have this preview menu, okay? So here by default, this will be set to best quality. So what this means is, you know, when you're doing your work, oftentimes you'll be just seeing how things are looking with your playback monitor by hitting play here, right? If this is set to best quality, then like what you're seeing on the playback monitor, that is of the best quality, but that can often put a lot of stress on CapCut, okay? So I just like to set this at best performance because anyway, we're gonna get the best quality ultimately after we export. But why should we face those lagging issues when this video that we're seeing here is not that important. This is just like a preview playback monitor video that we're seeing. So just set it to best performance is gonna just cool things down a bit, especially when you start adding a lot of things on to the timeline. Right, so this is also done. We're kind of getting close to our main task of trimming. There is, however, one step left before we can trim, which is to sync the audio and the video together. So how do you do that is very, very easy. And it is unbelievable that CapCut is a free editing tool because what I'm about to show you, this thing is actually reserved for the paid editing tools, right? So this is one of those features which you should be really, really grateful for because all we have to do is, so just take your mouse, select both the clips, okay? So I'm just dragging my left click, selecting both of them, both of them are highlighted, just right click, okay? And just select sync video and audio. So even if you've recorded your audio separately, you can easily sync it because it syncs with the audio of the built-in mic of the DSLR, which is within this video clip. And the bottom one is from the label mic that I'm wearing, okay? So it's, yeah, it's sometimes you it can just take a bit of time because it's, you know, a lot of footage, but you can see now it has just moved that video and now this is aligned properly. So just see the difference now, okay? Because this is going to make a huge difference. So if I just play this video, let me first mute the good audio, which is the down one, so that you can just hear the bad audio, okay? So let me just play this. So maybe something like this. Just typing in your command, it's like your personal... Right, so that doesn't sound good, but just see if... Now I'm going to mute this and turn this on and you see the difference. Your command, eh, and just typing in your command, it's like your personal genie. So you can see, right, there's a huge, huge amount of difference. That's why it's good to always record your audio separately. If you're interested in the shooting part of things, by the way, do check out my videography course because that's where I cover the shooting part, okay? This is all about editing. Now, finally, that we've done this, we have our aspect ratio, we've changed some things here. We're finally going to go and start our trimming process. So we'll do that in the next video. I'll see you there. All right, welcome back. So let's get started with trimming this footage. Now, 
how things are going to work is that there are a, there are some different ways by which you can do this in CapCut. And oftentimes what you'll find is once you have learned all the techniques that I'm going to be showing you in this video, you're going to find that you will develop your own workflow. Okay, sometimes you'll use one technique uh, depending on if it's convenient that time. Sometimes you'll use another technique. Okay, so you'll understand this by the end of this particular video. However, bef however, before we start trimming this, okay, we need to first of all find that point where we make our first cut. Okay, so let's try to go here uh, in this. Remember, we have some empty space here. That's because in this particular case, we synced the audio video, so it moved the video. So we have some extra space here. Oftentimes, you'll find your video right at the start, okay? That's not a problem. You can always move them after you've made the split. So let's look at that first area where we need to make the split. So you can see here, I'm just walking in. So obviously, this is not the part. Let's just play this video right now. And you can clearly see in the audio waveform here that, yeah, this part is not the correct part because my voice is not there, right? So um, even though my lips are moving, it sounds looks funny, but I was just kind of rehearsing things, okay? But it starts somewhere like here, right? So if you just play this, have you seen the lay, right? So we know that, yes, the first cut has to come here. Now, can you see that it's not very convenient for us right now to exactly pinpoint to that particular spot? Now, this is where before we make the cut, it's a good idea to learn how to zoom into the timeline. So this can be done into a couple, uh, by a couple of ways. So first is you can use this slider here. Okay, so if I just move this, it helps me to basically expand or zoom into the timeline. And now it can be easy for me because I can exactly go at this point. And you can verify that, yes, I'm just about to start speaking, right? So this be a good area to make that particular cut, okay? However, this can be a bit time consuming because this is something that you'll do again and again, zooming in, zooming out of the timeline, right? Because you're cutting often. So the shortcut for this is if you hold down the control or command key, so I'm just doing that. And then if you use your mouse wheel, okay? If I uh, use the wheel towards me, like if I uh, move the wheel towards me, it helps me shrink the timeline or zoom out. Or if I move the wheel away from me, it zooms in. Okay, and I find this to be much, much faster. Also, oftentimes, after you've zoomed in and let's say you've made the cuts, you quickly want to zoom out to uh, something which where you can kind of make sense of the whole timeline. That's where this one button click can help you, which is zoom to fit timeline. So if I hit this, the shortcut you can see is shift plus Z or Z. So right now I'm just going to hit this. And it kind of immediately brings you back to the that overall zoomed out look also. So you don't always have to zoom out and, you know, the manual way. Okay, so I keep using these two a lot. So zoom in and then shift plus Z or Z. Okay, so now we need to just quickly zoom in. We know, yeah, this is the area to make that particular cut. And what I can do here is maybe I'll just zoom in further and just go slightly. Yeah. I think this is fine. So how do you make the cut now finally? So there are a lot of ways to do this. One is that you can simply hit the split uh, button here or the shortcut as you can see is control or command plus B. Now here's the thing, if I was to hit this, it'll only make the split on the top layer. But remember, in this case, we're actually dealing with two layers. So what we just need to do is before we do this, we just can select both of them and then hit this. So just see. Now it's made this split in both the layers. And then what we can do is we can just simply, so anytime you use this after that, again, you kind of get this cursor back, right? So now I can just hold on my mouse, select both of them and hit delete on my keyboard. So now that whole area is gone. Let me just quickly press our shortcut. Remember this one, just to get this view. And now I know that yes, we just have this empty space here, which you can fill just like this. So I can just move it right here. Okay, so this is one way by which you can do that, right? So let's just undo things a bit because we'll also look at some other ways of doing things. Another way which uh, is like really, really fast is if you just want to do this very quickly is this icon that you see here, the button, which is delete left. You also have delete right. Delete left is Q. Delete right is W. And as the name suggests, it's going to delete anything if I hit this one, Q1 is going to delete anything to the left of where our timeline indicator is. So just see, now if I just hit Q, for, so first let me just verify if I'm at the right place. Yeah, all right. So if I just hit Q, everything's gone. So we didn't 
you will need to split and then delete is just with one click it just goes okay another thing that you can make uh, that you can do to make things even faster remember is that yes the first part now has been made very easy but what about the second part do we still need to drag this to the beginning what if this also can happen on its own okay the answer to that is a mixture of yes and no this is a slightly a bit of a downside in cap cut so let me show you what i mean okay so right now yes we have this empty space but you see this particular icon here which says turn on main track magnet okay this is disabled but just see if this is enabled just see what happens on the timeline it just automatically after you've made any cut if it notices any space it fills it up however the downside in cap cut is that the audio file doesn't move okay this is like not a bug but it's just that it's not there i've tried to find a solution for this the only acceptable solution for this is if i hit control or command z again to bring this back what i can do is that before i hit this okay so i can group these two together and now if i was to hit this it'll take them together now because they are kind of you know working uh, together with each other okay right now i'm just going to ungroup things i think because uh, ungroup these layers because i'm just want to show you okay uh one more way of splitting so so ideally what i just have shown you here this will always stay on if you want this feature okay and then whenever you make for example if i was to press q right now that whole step will just happen together okay so you didn't you don't have to do it after you've hit q because this will just stay enabled all the time don't let it confuse you right now you will be doing this so often that you'll just get used to it okay but let me show you the third way of doing things the third way is we can go to this menu here and we can access the split tool which you can either select by here and you get this blade like thing or you can hit b so you'll often move between a and b a is the selection tool so let me just press a you get this cursor thing back which helps you select things move around things and if you press b on your keyboard you get the blade okay and this blade helps you again split things so i can make a split like this but again it only did on the top layer what if you want two layers three layers maybe later on we'll have four or five layers and we want to split make a split in that case you know now you must be knowing that it's going to be one of the keys right shift or control a command or alt or option you know sometimes you can just experiment with it but in this case is shift so if i hold down shift can you see that i get this yellow icon this telling me that it's going to cut everything in this timeline so just see now so i'm holding down shift and now i know i want to make so let me zoom in a bit and the best part now with this technique is that i don't need to rely on the timeline indicator okay so i can just hold down shift and then just make the cut okay then i can quickly press a delete these things and again i didn't have that on but if i would have had this on it would have moved okay uh in this case it would only move the video because remember we ungrouped uh these things okay now like i said so these are the different ways by which you can make uh, the cuts another way one final way that you should know is that if you just go towards the end of the track okay you get this little icon you can also click and hold on your mouse and then just cut it like this so then we we've got rid of all this and it's going to just start from here you can do it on the other side also pull it back towards the other side okay so like i said you can see like four different ways you'll often find yourself using a mix you just get used to it now which one do i use the most i usually use the b and shift technique why because then i don't need to rely on this indicator every time so i often find myself using this a lot it just gives me more manual control secondly i often find myself using the q or this one like uh, delete left option because that just gets rid of everything together now one thing okay even though i'm not going to be doing this inside this particular video one thing that you can do to make your life slightly easier is when you've got an a roll footage like this where you've synced two things one of the things that you can do is that before you start trimming export this so later on in this course you're going to see how to export a video that means you get the final video export this 
and then bring this back as an asset video because then you just have one layer to deal with for your A-roll footage. And that kind of makes things easy because then you don't have to hit shift, then you don't have to worry about this, like if this was on, you don't have to worry about the audio not moving or grouping things. Just for this course, I'm not doing it, but you should know that you can follow this approach also, just so that you're working with one layer when it comes to your A-roll footage, okay? So I hope that through this video, now that you are ready to start cutting things, trimming things, because what we're gonna do in the next video is, we're actually gonna now trim this video and get it down to inside 60 seconds. So let's do that.